Hi there and welcome to spreadsheet solving. In our video today we want to cover a very powerful function and that is called the index function. Now you'll notice in our videos on the VLOOKUP and the HLOOKUP we would either reference a row number or a column number. Well the neat thing is with the index function you can use both a row number and a column number to return a value. Okay. So let's put this down here. The index, what does it do? It returns a value based on three things. One is your data range, and oh, that's also known as your array. Two is your row number, and three is your column number. So how exactly do we set up an index function? Well, you begin with an equal sign followed by the name of the function index. The first argument is the data range, the second row number and the final is the column number. So this right here is how you would set up a formula using the index function. All right, let's take a look at a concrete example here. What we have here are the top 10 tennis pros uh, along with information such as their rank, birth date, and their pro year. So if we assign a row or a column number, we can then return a value using the index function. So let's say we want to return who the 10th ranked tennis player is. At, if we were to answer such a question, we would know to assign a row of 10 and a column of 3 because the 10th ranked player would be located in uh, row 10 and the, th uh, the name of this player would be located in column 3. Hence, 10 for the row, 3 for the column. Now the data set would be that blue shaded area which we have right here. So if we set up the index function here, the first argument would be the data range, second would be the row number, and the third would be the column number. If we were to do that, close the parentheses and click enter, you should expect that this function will return John Isner. Why is that? Okay, let's walk this through. Again, first argument would include cells A2 to D11, which is highlighted here. So within this data range, the index function says to go to uh, row 10, so it goes down to row 10, and across three columns, one, two, three. So here you have specified the row, you have specified the column within your defined data set and so you would expect that this function will return cell C11 which is John Isner. Okay so if we do another example here let's say we want to return the year that Andy Murray turned pro. So at that point we can keep the same data range because that's appropriately you know, marked, but we have to change the row and column. So if we were to change the row to Andy Murray's row, you would change the 10 to a 4. And if you want to specify what year he turned pro, that would be column 4. So if we change both of these to column to represent 4, you will know that the year 2005, as you can see here, is the year that Andy Murray turned pro. Okay, so this is a very straightforward, very logical function. All it does is we start with the name index followed by the data range, followed by the row number and column number. And there you have it. Okay, so in our next video, take a look here. We're going to be looking at how we can apply the match function within the index function and using that you will see how that combination is actually even more powerful than a VLOOKUP function. All right, so stay tuned. We'll see you there.